Hello people, I am Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new lecture of C Programming. So today we are learning if and else. Yes, this is where we are going to introduce decision making in our programs. So what have we done so far? We have learned how to run simple basic programs, then we went on to declaring variables, learn programs where we operate on variables, accept inputs from the user, if variables of the type integer, of the type float and so on. Now we are taking it one level higher. Good programs involve decision making. The simplest way of doing decision making in a C program is, is using the if statement. The if statement comes in various forms. It may just have an if or it may have an if and an else or it may have an if else if else as in the form of a nested if statement. So that's the first thing I'll teach you the various types of ifs. Yeah, this is the most basic where you have all three if, if, else if and so on, right? Once we do this, of course, with practice programs, if you've seen my videos before, there's nothing that I teach, which is just the theory slapped on the board or on your face. It is with programming example. Whatever I teach, I will take an example, run the program on VS Code, show you the result so that you're absolutely sure of what you're learning. And it gives you that final push that is needed so that you then stop the video and type that same program out by yourself. Only when you have that belief that yes, all of this is correct because in front of me it has run. That's when you get the confidence of trying it out yourself. If it doesn't run when you type it, you know that there's something I'm doing wrong. You keep pushing, you keep working, identify your problem and that's how you grow as a programmer. You can only learn theory for the sake of a theory exam. But to be called a programmer, to be a programmer, you need to practice code. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'll be showing you this with coding examples. Then there are other forms of if where you combine multiple conditions like you can see if so and so and so and so you can combine with an and you can combine with an or you can combine with a bunch of ands and ors depending on how complex your logic is again with an example i'll show you how this works and finally there's something called ternary if this is very popular when you're preparing for a gate exam or any kind of competitive exam you don't use something like this very often in practical life. Not that you can't use. Of course, it's beautiful. It can be used. But as a practice, most programmers don't really use this in their day to day lives. But since it is possible to use this, this comes. It's a rare thing. That's why it comes a lot in these kind of competitive exams where they want to filter out the cream from the normal students. So yes, this is an if statement. It doesn't look like if, if you notice, there's no if written at all, but it is an if statement. And so is this, something that looks like a complete misprint or it's out of place. And you know, everybody thinks there's something before or after it. No, it is, there isn't. This is a statement by itself and it's an if statement. So I'll be showing you these kind of complex if statements also. The one that we use most often is your regular if and else, but as a student of the subject, you need to know all of these categories. Right. So my idea is when I prepare, when you learn all this properly, I'm preparing you for my next lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to do a menu driven calculator. You'll take two numbers from the user. You'll display the menu to the user, asking the user whether he or she wants to add, subtract, multiply, divide or anything else that you want. The user selects the option and based on that, you'll produce your result. Once you know how to do menu driven programming, then it just opens a Pandora's box for you. There are so many things that you can explore in it. It's just unbelievable. You can do menu driven programming for uh, highest, lowest, minimum, maximum, uh, what do you say, average, some, uh, uh, so on. There are so many options. You do uh, geometry, trigonometry, you take a circle, you can have a menu driven program for finding the radius, the diameter, the area, the periphery, or so on, so the volume if you're doing a 3D object, and so on. So menu driven programs are a, uh, a trend that is followed by all colleges in their assignments. You just need to understand once how to create a menu. That's what programming is all about. You take any big program which goes into thousands of lines, analyze it. What is it? There is a section where variables are defined. There is a section where inputs are taken. There is a section where outputs are generated. There is a section where functions are defined and called. There is a section where parameters are defined, pointers are defined for the parameters. There is a section where data structures are defined and used like arrays, etc. There are, of course, various sections where there are loops and there are various sections where there is decision making. This is what is programming. Put all of them together, that's programming. So what you do is you don't learn that big program and try to understand all those facets together. You won't. You may understand that program, but that doesn't mean that you know programming. The way to approach, the correct approach is to understand each of those things that I just mentioned as a separate entity. 
practice them so rigorously that yes, if I say you, I have taught you, if I have taught you everything about it, if I say I've taught you a function as an example, I've taught you everything about it and so on. So once you've practiced each one of them thoroughly with programming examples, then combining them to create big programs becomes very easy. Then it just becomes second nature to start coding. Okay. Then your effort is to develop good clear logic that's when you move out of the subject of C programming and then go to DSA and then you go to more programming oriented subject where you understand what is object oriented programming and go to the higher level and one by one you keep increasing anyway so that's the whole journey of a programmer my goal here is to first of all get you into that train where you can be called a programmer all right now this whole video and the whole course of C programming is there on my website the link is given down below bharataacharyaeducation.com click on that link Register yourself as a user. You'll see a bunch of courses over there. I teach various subjects. Way down, right at the end, you'll see the course of C programming because it's still being developed, but a lot of videos have already been posted. There's so many good uh, results that I've been seeing from students. I'll make a special video only showing you the output screens of all the students. I keep giving these small assignments in every video. So students send me that, sir, I've done this, sir, I've done this. Sometimes you get these messages in the middle of the night. And you immediately understand, yes, this is when the student finally caught it. And that sense of satisfaction that you get as a teacher, that yes, somebody is sitting up in the night and practicing the code or the topics that are being taught because that student has gotten eager to do programming. That is the biggest satisfaction that a teacher can get. So anyway, I'll make a separate video of all of these outputs. I've seen one student, I, I can't stop myself from saying it. One student, uh, just two days back, sent me an output which was created just using printf. No logic, nothing else. Just printf. By simple printf, he created the whole national flag of India. What a proud moment for me it was. I mean, come on. I, I, it is rigorous effort, of course. When you know logic, when you know loops, you can write to say, do the same thing in probably one tenth of the size of that program. But that's not the point. The point is the effort that was put and the, the, the seriousness that was put because the flag was made to perfection. So, uh, that's, that's, uh, you create that file. The person has put so much effort in just print if that person is just beginning to learn programming. So as a teacher, if you know you have got someone who have never, has never written a program, to the point that he is sitting, or I don't know whether it's a he or a she, for me it's a WhatsApp number. That student has written so much effort in the middle of the night to send you that uh, output. It just makes you feel that you're doing something right. Anyway, and that is about me, this got carried away, so I told you. Hope to see you there on my website and we are going ahead. Don't be left behind. Wish you all the best. Do well.